Good afternoon, everyone, and happy weekend, almost. Countdown is on a few more hours, and the weekend officially begins. And today we're having another special style snack. As we've been talking about this week, the doors to the society are open, which means you can join the society and get the Stunning Style Winter Classic Wardrobe Guide. It's only available for nine days this season, and many of those days have ticked by. The doors close on Tuesday. That's just a few days away. And with the craziness of Thanksgiving coming up, I know a lot of you like to wait until the last day. You think you've got time, but oh, you're going to forget. I've done that. That's how I know. I'll, 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 I've got a few days. I'll do that later. You're going to forget, and then you're going to be sad, and I hate for you to be sad. But once the doors are closed, we don't open them again until the spring, and that means you won't get access to the winter wardrobe guide. We are doing these special style snacks this week because of the wardrobe guide, and I share some extra things with you. And if you want to learn more about the society and the wardrobe guides, you can go to stunningstyle.com forward slash society. And today I want to talk to you about a topic that plagued me for a very long time. Um, fashion or function? Do you have to choose? So let's talk about a fashion disaster of a different variety. I heard a woman scream, no, I mean, the panic. My mommy senses went on red alert. As I was approaching the curb to walk into Target with my own gaggle of five tiny tots, I saw a toddler who was bolting from inside the store toward the parking lot and coming right at me. I grabbed him and returned him to his panicked mother who was several steps behind him. <clears throat> And she was handicapped by her shoes. Her legs were fine. Her enormously tall heels had kept her from catching her little one, who was well-equipped for sprinting in his running shoes. Now, don't get me wrong. Her shoes were gorgeous. And it completed her outfit, which was so on point. And as I continued into the store with my mess of kids, I looked down at my own shoes. They were sneakers, and they weren't the fashion kind of sneakers. They were the frumpy kind of sneakers. And my outfit was, well, I mean, it was covering all of my necessary parts, but otherwise unremarkable. And I'll show you... <laughs> You guys, this is killing me. Going, Digging back into the archives to find these pictures, I end up just staring wistfully at these babies that I miss so much. And then <laughs> I lose track of time and I almost show up late because I'm so busy looking at pictures. But here's a picture of the kind of outfit that... Uh, I wore a lot and the kind of sneakers. These were the cutest sneakers I had and could have been paired with better things to make them look better. Most of my sneakers were not quite this cute. Here we are at Stone Mountain, Georgia with, uh, I had just had, he was like three weeks old, this one, the one in my, my little baby Bjorn. Um, yeah, I'm really going to win any fashion awards with this one. And I felt as frumpy as I looked pretty much all the time. Before I had kids, my top priority when I shopped for clothes and shoes was fabulousness. That's pretty much it. I only had to be able to walk from my car to my desk in my shoes and back again. So comfort wasn't really a top priority. If they were really that bad, I would just kick them off under my desk and no one would know. 
There wasn't much at my desk to do damage to my clothes, so snags and spills weren't really a concern. As long as I could sit comfortably in my chair, I was pretty safe and I would wear whatever was fabulous. But after I became a mom, I realized very quickly that carrying three infant car seats, juggling a diaper bag that could have double as a large carry-on for travel, changing diapers and dodging projectile reflux in heels, silk blouses, and pencil skirts was highly impractical at best and a potential disaster at worst. Instead of fabulousness, my new priority for my wardrobe was function. Can I carry the car seats without stumbling and dropping my precious cargo? Can I get in and out of the diaper bag without worrying about snagging my sleeve on the Velcro and ruining my top? Can I wash it? <laughs> Is it washable? My casual wardrobe consisted of some t-shirts, some chinos, a zip-up hoodie sweater, and some sneakers. That was all I had that was appropriate to my new job. And, and over the years, I bought some new tops. I even got some jeans. I didn't even own jeans when I came home with those, those little ones. Um, but... As you can see from that picture, I didn't do a bang up job. Um, for many years, my wardrobe had a distinct division between fashion and function. I thought my only options were to look good or be a good mom, but I couldn't do both. My beautiful clothes collected dust and so did my self-esteem. Shall we look at another one? So this is a picture of when, mm, gosh, he wasn't sitting up yet. This is one of the triplets. So t-shirt, I got some jeans and a hoodie. It's sideways. <laughs> Is my picture sideways? I just realized I was sitting here doing this, looking at this picture. And uh, it finally occurred to me that you are also looking at that like this. <laughs> There we go. There we go. We're all right side up. Um, let's see. I don't know. Four months old, maybe here. So this is four months after they were born. And this and there's my my headband again. I wore this headband all the time to keep my hair out of my face and out of diapers. So this is my uniform. This I had a just like a rotation of t-shirts like this. I eventually got a pair of jeans. Uh, and I had that hoodie. I had two hoodies. The other one was Navy. Um, and sneakers. That was what I wore all the time. I could wear my, my pretty clothes to church, but the first six months we were in quarantine, so we weren't going to church. In the blink of an eye, I went from loving my wardrobe to loathing it. I hated how I dressed and that I had transitioned so quickly to a frumpy mom, but I didn't know what else to do. I had always loved style and looking nice, but that part of me had died when I birthed those babies, or at least that's how it felt. And between the chaos of having six kids in six years and being pregnant or nursing all that time, I and mean, if you haven't noticed, every time I show you these pictures, I'm like, I'm pregnant here. I just had a baby there. That's what it was for six years. And I didn't have the time or the resources to figure out anything else. So I stuck with my frump. As polished as that target mom was, those shoes could have cost her a kid. And that was too high a price to pay. So after my youngest was born and I knew we were done having kids, I decided to figure it out. I wanted to look nice again. I wanted to look like myself. And be able to do my job as a mom? How could I marry my love of fashion with my need for function? I started looking at style blogs and it was so frustrating and useless. Even the ones who had young kids were wearing four inch suede heels, carrying Chanel backpacks and dressing for daytime television to go to play dates at the park. Apparently that's the dress code. I never got the memo. I could never 
ever wear something like that to the park. I had a distinctly messy lifestyle with kids ages six and under, and my criteria hadn't changed. Can I outrun my kids in these shoes? Will that cheese I sat in ruin, you know, wash off my pants? And if you haven't heard the cheese in my pants story, it's a great one. <laughs> but I don't know if we have time for that today. Oh, wow. Can I approach every diaper blowout fearless that any runoff might not ruin my clothes? Can I make dinner, wash dishes, walk across the soccer field, juggle toddlers, and unclog toilets in what I'm wearing? And can I like how I look at the same time? The answer turned out to be yes. So let's look at just a couple more before we move on. Partly because I like seeing my little ones. <laughs> This was us. This is me looking, trying to look um, more uh, stylish. I've got jeans. I'm wearing a button up shirt with a sweater over it. That's just a favorite of mine. It always has been. And I'm wearing my nice coat that I used to wear to work and the sneakers. Uh, but we were at a farm here. I don't remember what farm this was. I'd have to go back and look. But um, so sneakers were definitely appropriate. It could have been cuter sneakers, but just as functional. Um, but so I was trying, right? I was trying to find that way that I could like how I looked and go to a farm with my kids and not worry about my clothes getting dirty and ruined. But it, it took me a while to get there. This winter, as many of us are likely to be spending more time at home, we will be tempted to get cozy. Maybe a little too cozy if we believe that we can't juggle all of our home responsibilities and be comfortable while wearing something we look and feel great in. And as we talked about yesterday, getting dressed every day can be a critical part of feeling great about ourselves in a time when it's easy to get to feel down. And I don't want any of us to take a self-esteem nosedive this winter because we feel like we can't have fashion and function at home this winter. There are a lot of options between pajama party cozy and runway chic. If you marry the two, I finally learned that fashion and function aren't opposing forces. You don't have to pick a side. Both needs can come together to make fun, stylish, comfortable outfits. And it's in this middle ground where my wardrobe lives now. I still wear sneakers. I love my sneakers, but now they're functional and cute. They fit my style and I can still outrun any kid. Well, my older one now and he's in cross country. I can't outrun him, but that's not because of my shoes. It's because he's so fast and I'm not. But these days, you know, I don't have to catch him usually. Um, but I still, when I go on field trips with my kids, my little ones, little one, um, I wear sneakers. I have had runners. Not, not usually my kid, but on field trips. And I still wear sneakers. I'm just wearing the right kind of sneakers for me. As I created the Stunning Style Winter Classic Wardrobe Guide, every item I chose had to meet the criteria of cozy and chic. Those were the two words that I kept in mind as I was choosing things. Is it cozy? Will we wanna wear it at home this winter? Will we feel she can put together so that getting dressed will feel like a treat we look forward to each day? We can look and feel fantastic while getting the benefits of spending more time at home because, because if we're going to 
can stay home, we may as well get the good parts, which is being cozy and curling up when we feel like it, right? So as you look at your winter wardrobe, I want you to ask yourself the same questions I asked myself as I chose each item so that you look forward to wearing these clothes, putting together outfits, and getting dressed every day. We all have different lifestyles. So instead of being, you know, making a list of questions that's super specific to my life with little ones, because, you know, my youngest is not that little anymore. I kept it broad enough to meet the needs we're all looking for this winter. And then you can add in your own questions to be more specific to what your needs are. So as I was shopping for the wardrobe guide, is it comfortable enough to wear all day? Can I get down on the floor without splitting my britches? Can I curl up on the couch and be comfortable? Is it cozy? Can I live my normal life in these clothes without having to go change to wash the dishes and make dinner? Can I hug my kids without word like, mm, but no. Can I walk my dog in it? Can I look great for an impromptu Zoom meeting? Will I light up when I see it on myself or think about wearing it? Those are things that I kept in mind because I could create the most beautiful winter wardrobe for you, but if it's not functional, and I mean, honestly, I keep these things in mind every season, but this season it was just even more important to get that cozy factor in um, because that's what I think we're all thinking about. And if I created this more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Aspirational type of wardrobe where, yes, it is beautiful, but I could never wear that. Like that just, that would not work with my life right now. Then what good would it do? None, you would get no use out of it, nor would I. And so I really keep these things in mind as I create the guide, it has to work. It can be beautiful, it can be stylish, it also has to be functional. So let's talk about what cozy and chic means. Because the guides are all about building a wardrobe you'll love and wear for years to come, I wasn't willing to create a guide full of one season wonders. Will I want to wear these things next winter and the winter after? That that was essential. So this is some of what I included in the, in the winter guide and some of the things that you can look for in your own winter wardrobe. Pants that are comfortable enough to wear all day. Wait, because <laughs> I know you're just like, my yoga pants are comfortable enough to wear all day. My pajama pants would definitely be that criteria. We're not done yet. And look put together and you can curl up on the couch in. T-shirts that look nice on you, <laughs> flatter you in colors you love or in great neutrals that are fantastic for you. And, um, and just look put together. I'm not talking about your college t-shirt that you can wear alone or you can layer with. Cozy sweaters that feel great on your skin and flatter your shape in colors that uh, make you glow. Shoes that are easy on and off because let's be honest, we kick them off when we curl up on the couch. They have to be wearable, walkable, and possibly short distance sprintable if that's part of your life your dog might get away from you. Mine does sometimes. Well, she doesn't get away from me when we go on a walk, but if my daughter's holding the leash, she gets away on the regular. I was looking for a gorgeous cardigan in a color or pattern that you would love, that I would love. And I'm not talking about your old, faded, stretched out, hole in the sleeve, shan't be seen in public outcast. 
we all have them, right? We wear them at night or when we're doing something dirty and gross, like the one that you used to love, but has met its match and, and its maker, and you're not quite willing to throw it out. It's your grubby cardigan. That is not the one I'm talking about. I mean a cardigan or some other type of cozy layer. It could be a, a vest, a puffer vest, anything that you love that completes your look and you love to wear. It could be a neutral color or a color that you really love. A gorgeous coat that completes your look. It can be neutral and still be fabulous. And we will actually leave the house sometimes, if for no other reason than to drive through at the pharmacy or the grocery pickup. But hopefully when you go on those daily winter essential walks to get some fresh air, like we talked about yesterday. And, you know, something that um, has come up in the society lately is members saying one of the things that they've learned about their wardrobes is having a great coat really completes your outfit because in the cold weather, a lot of times that's the only thing people see. It can be stylish and functional. I promise my favorite my outerwear is my weakness. Let's be honest. I mean, I don't lie about that. I love coats and, um, this one that's featured in the wardrobe guide I have in multiple colors. I love it so much. Um, here it is in Navy and in the wardrobe guide, I featured it in black, but I believe it's also available in Navy this year. I have it in black also, and I wear it all winter long. This is a very beautiful coat but it's not just a pretty face. It's also very warm, very warm. I mean, I'm not going to go skiing in this coat, right? It's not a ski coat and it's not probably rated to minus 45 degrees, but it was pretty darn cold where I lived before. And I wore these coats all winter long. This is the very definition of fashion and function. It's not so precious that I'm like, don't touch me. Actually, don't even look at me because you're going to ruin my coat. Social distancing, please. Only for my coat. Just don't get close enough to breathe on it. That's not it at all. This is a very functional coat. I wear it to dress up. I wear it to dress down. And if I had to pick one coat for the whole winter, I would pick the black one. Like if I had to leave my house and take one coat for the winter, it would be this one. Hold on. I am, oh, I have my space heater on and my feet are a fire. It finally just got really hot on my feet. Um, this is fashion and function. This whole outfit is fashion and function. Um, everything I'm wearing is, is stylish but functional. And this is the kind of thing that I could have worn with my little ones. So the whole point of that was in the society, they have been talking about how one of the great things that they've learned is one great coat to finish off your outfit makes all the difference. And that's why I choose outerwear as part of the wardrobe guides. And then look for a few accessories that make you feel dressed. A great pair of earrings, a necklace you love, a scarf you glow in. If you love scarves, that's a perfect accessory option and they're cozy. So these are all things that I've included in the winter wardrobe guide. If you don't want to dig through your own closet to figure this out, I've done it for you. That's what the wardrobe guide is for. I have shopped the whole internet. I order these things. I test them. I try them on. And then I choose 30 to 40 of them. I put them in a complete 
capsule collection. You could just wear these 40 things all winter long if you wanted to. And then I create 100 outfit templates with these items. I put those outfits on monthly calendars. So I pick your outfit for you, help you rotate through all of your pieces and get wear from everything. The very first thing we do is shop our closets because my, my purpose is for you to be able to wear what you already have and make the most of what you already have, rediscover old favorites and find new ways to wear these classic pieces that you likely own. If you need to replace any of your, your basics or you want a few special fresh things for your wardrobe, I have the uh, custom shopping portal with all the things that I have found that you will love for your classic winter wardrobe. But there's never any pressure to buy anything in the shopping portal. A lot of our members shop their closets exclusively or they thrift or some of them even make their own. And then I walk you step by step every Monday with the style steps on curating your wardrobe so that at the end of the season, you have a winter wardrobe you love, an album of outfits that are your favorites, and we work our way towards a closet clean out at the end of the season, if that's what you want to. You're not required to clean out your closet, but at the end, that's what we're working toward is this completed wardrobe and then you, we go through a closet clean out because we've been talking all season long about what you personally love and don't love to wear. And by the time we get there, it's pretty easy to figure out what stays and what goes. We do a wardrobe evaluation to figure out what you have, what's missing, and what you might be looking for in the future. Because as we talked about this week, Shopping from a list saves you so much money. And if you know what's missing, then you can stay on point and on track. And with the Black Friday sales coming, this the wardrobe guide, well, first of all, I did all the shopping. So you can just look in the portal, click, click, there you go. You don't have to dig through all the websites, but it it gives you a list. You know what you're looking for. You're You're shopping with purpose and not just randomly buying whatever is out there. You can join the society or learn more about it by going to stunningstyle.com forward slash society. It is so helpful, so useful. Getting dressed will never be easier or more fun. And it'll be something fun to do this winter. I think we all need something fun to do this winter. Something to look forward to and a place to go and join some friends who love the same things that we do and are, are pursuing the same thing. It'll also give you some accountability to get up and get dressed if that's what you want. I would love to have you join us there. It is fantastic. And the link is in the comments if you want to check it out. I hope that you can see the difference now that fashion and function aren't mutually exclusive. It's not one or the other. You can have both. And I can help you figure that out. All right, let's take a look at the comments. Hi, April from Nancy in Michigan. Hi, Nancy in Michigan. Thank you for watching it or joining me. Kathy says, I see you washed your hair. I did, thank you for noticing. As a matter of fact, I did wash my hair. Uh, it, I really it was not gonna go another day. There, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't good. So do you want to know what I did this week? This is, oh gosh. So I bought a new dry shampoo. I'm always trying. I have my favorites, but I'm a sucker for a new product. This is the one that's going to change my life, right? And I was out of dry shampoo and I was like, I'll try this one. It's volumizing. Love me some volume. So um, I pulled it out on, I think it was Wednesday or Tuesday, it must've been Tuesday. Yeah, because I washed my hair on Saturday. By Tuesday, we need some dry shampoo. And I did my usual and I just, you know, I lifted and and I sprayed everywhere like I usually do, right? And I was brushing it out um, and then the doorbell rang and blah, blah, blah. And I got to work 
And I went and took my outfit pictures at the end of the day. And when I looked at the pictures, there was a big white stripe down my part because I had not brushed out this dry shampoo well enough. And as it turns out, um, because of whatever they have put in there for volume, it might be Elmer's glue, I'm not sure, but my hair was so crispy, I, <laughs> I couldn't even use those pictures. I mean, I looked like a skunk. With, and I couldn't, I didn't see it in the mirror because I don't do this in the mirror usually. You know what I mean? Um, it was so bad. It was so bad. And so after I took those pictures, I was like, oh my gosh. And so I went in the bathroom and I was like brushing and brushing and brushing and trying to get the, all the dry shampoo out. And um, it took a while. And anyway, my hair was so crunchy from all the stuff, all that dry shampoo, like volumizing stuff yeah like when I brushed it out yesterday like I brushed it back and it stayed back like straight out behind me like I was standing in the wind and I was like my hair's going up today and it stayed <laughs> it stayed up but it was so crispy like there was, we were not getting another day out of it <laughs> so I really didn't have a choice but to wash my hair today I could have Another week, I probably could have eked out one more updo in a headband, but not, not this time. <laughs> and I had to retake that out. The one I just showed you with the burgundy pants and the coat, that was the outfit I had taken the day before, and I had to retake it the next morning because skunk stripes are not, not in, you know. Distraction, side note, squirrel. Moving on. Um, Kathy says, that's a handful. I have twins. And I always said, I don't know how people with triplets can do it. You know what? You step up to what you have. That was my first. I didn't know any different for one thing, which honestly was a blessing. I had nothing to compare it to. Um, and then I had my fourth the next year. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, it was so much easier when I had three. I remember how much easier it was when I had three but you step up and I stepped up to having four and then I had my fifth two years later. And, oh my gosh. I remember how much easier it was when I only had four, you know, it just, you, you do, you would have, you could have, we all can. You just, um, you make it happen. Kimberly says, hi, April, this is Kimberly. Your baby Bjorn picture really resonated with me. I remember those days. I'm happy to say that my style has evolved into something much better thanks to you and your help. Oh, Kimberly, was it a flash from the past? I mean, digging this, it's hard for me to go back through these pictures looking for you because it makes my heart, I, I get all weepy. I miss those babies a lot. And it was, it you know, it takes me back. I don't miss the outfits, but I do miss the babies. And uh, I hope it was a good flash for the baby part. Maybe not the fashion part, but I'm so glad that it has evolved to something better for you. And I feel honored that you've allowed me to help with that. Kathy says, functional and cute. I love it. Well, it can be. And it can be. That That is what I wanted. That was what I was searching for. And that's what I've created for you. A Facebook user says, do you go live every day? I don't. This is a special week because the doors to the society are open. I go live Monday through Friday this week, and then I'll be live um, Monday and Tuesday next week. The doors close on Tuesday. Usually I do these style snacks on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I won't be doing it next week because you will have seen me seven times in the last week, and I think you'll have had enough of me. Plus it's a day before Thanksgiving, and I'll be We'll all be prepping in whatever fashion. Um, so you can join me usually starting the next week back again on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Put it on your calendar. Um, if you follow and like my page, you'll be alerted when that happens too. But it's fun. We, we have fun here and I hope you'll join us. Kathy says, you are so funny. I love the way you wear things. Well, thank you. I'm glad I could bring some humor to your day. Wendy says, I love that navy coat, especially paired with the burgundy pants and leopard purse. I also have it in two colors, not navy yet. Maybe I'll get it this year. I love it too. I love this navy coat. It was the first one of this coat that I bought. 
and I have worn it and worn it and worn it and worn it and worn it some more. I love this coat. I may have worn my, I, I've had my navy one longer, so I've definitely worn it more times than my black one, but I do, I wear it all the time. It's so good. Nancy says, can you share the brand of the sweater you're wearing and content cashmere wool blend? I love that color. Nancy, this is in the shopping portal for the winter wardrobe guide. And there are several different options in this color. I love this color too. This purple is so hard to find. And I, yeah, it's included in the wardrobe guide. So um, you can learn more about that at stunningstyle.com forward slash society. There are different varieties versions. There's a crew neck, there's V neck, there's turtleneck. There's a, I don't know what you call it. It's not a cow neck. It's one of those turtlenecks that folds over your shoulder and goes like this. And do you know what I'm talking about? What would you call that? There's a lot of different versions of it um, in different fabrics. There's cashmere. This one I think is merino wool. It's a very fine merino wool. Um, but yeah, I hunted these all down because this color is just, it's just glorious. If it's coming off blue in your screen, there's also cobalt blue in the wardrobe guide sweater. This one's just like that true gorgeous purple. Adrian says, is the coat you're wearing here, the black coat with the burgundy pants and leopard bag in the portal? Yes, it's the featured, it's the featured black coat. It's the exact same one. The featured item. So if you just go in the portal and sort by the featured item, it's that one. The yeah. A fate oh Lynn says, why do you keep naming my closet old and worn college t-shirt yoga pants that wouldn't be worn outside anymore? LOL. Thanks for sharing fashion function. Um well Lynn, it's not just your wardrobe. We all had that. We all have those items in our wardrobes. Every single one of us. College t-shirt, yoga pants that we aren't wearing for yoga, that old ratty cardigan that we can't bear to part with because it used to be our favorite, but now it's got a hole in the sleeve. Like I was describing my very own stuff that I have that like when I just, you know, but it, it's not, it's not for day wear. Wendy says... Oh, she's answering Adrian. Diana says, I love the purple color on you. It makes your eyes pop. Well, thank you. I love this purple color too. And I'm glad it looks good on me. <laughs> Lori's laughing about the Elmer's glue in my hair. Well, yeah. <laughs> Nancy says, crack me up. Elmer's glue in the dry shampoo. I'm dying. That's what it felt like. I mean, crunchy. My hair was crunchy. I'm not kidding you when I said I was brushing it out, the dry shampoo, and it brushed, I was brushing back and it stayed like this. What's that cartoon? Oh, there's a cartoon character. It's like a, in a video game. He's really fast. He's blue and his hair's all like that. That's what my hair looked like and not in the good way. Someone wants to hear about the cheese pants. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm supposed to keep these short. I do a terrible job at that. Um, Wendy, it's not a mock neck. It's like, well, if you look in the portal, Wendy, you'll see it. But like if you've unfolded it, it would probably come up to here. But it it's a, if like the flap folds and goes diagonal here. And there's like, I think some buttons or something. It's supposed to look like you sliced a turtleneck and laid it flat. I don't remember. I, I can't tell you. I don't know what it's called. It's not a funnel neck either. Like it folds over and lays flat. Um, Kachuska says, I don't like to wear sneakers just for exercise, but if I have to wear sporty shoes, I wear Converse or Vans and I feel great. I'm edgy. Um, P.S. April, I'll miss your daily lives. Well, it, it is fun, but... <laughs> But once, well, if you're joining the society, you get me twice a week because every Monday I go live with them with the style steps. Um, but, and then I go live here uh, with the style snack on Wednesdays. But we, you know, so you can have, you can have me twice a week in the society. It's a lot of fun. 
and I have, I wear, my sneakers are, are more of the um, Vans type, like the slip-on. I have some leopard ones that I love. I have some red shiny patent looking ones that are slip-ons. I have some black snakeskin looking ones that I uh, are slip-ons. And then I've got some silver lace-ups that I wear. And I wear, you know, my leopard ones, I actually wear quite a bit. I love them. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes. That's who I'm talking about. That's what I look like. Sonic the Hedgehog. Lori says, I have belonged to several different internet fashion groups over the years, but the Stunning Style Society is the only one that has been an educational experience. I now understand what I prefer and why a file folder of favorite outfits I can count on each season and no more wasted money are bonuses. Thank you, April. Well, thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. And I'm glad that you've been with me all these years. We have a lot of fun, huh? Um, Diana says, I use baby powder in my hair as dry shampoo. It works and brings back memories of changing diapers. I just cannot stand the smell of, of baby powder. I've never, I've always hated that smell. It can't, I know a lot of people love it, but I can't, I mean, before I had kids, I hated that smell. There was a deodorant that smelled like, I don't, but it's a good tip. That talc definitely would absorb the powder. I've heard some people use cocoa powder. Like if you have dark hair, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> There's like, or I don't know. Uh, smell is a big thing for me. I have a, I have a smell thing, but um, that's a good tip. If you love the smell of baby powder, it's a great option. Wendy says, oh yes, the split turtleneck top. I'm totally eyeing that sweater. Is that what you call it? I've never bought a sweater like that. Um, so I, I don't know what you call it, but thank you. So the cheese story, um, I'll tell you what. On Monday, join me for our Monday. We have two more bonus style snacks coming. Join me Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and I will tell you the cheese on my pants story. It is truly embarrassing. Um, really, it was really, I mean, just, it was awful. It was three weeks after I had just had my fourth baby. It, <laughs> and it was in public, of course. Wouldn't be great. It wouldn't be such a great story if it hadn't happened in the book. So we'll I'll remind me on Monday and I will tell you the story at the end because it's totally unrelated to what we're talking about on Monday. On Monday, I'm going to show you a few of my favorite things from the uh, winter wardrobe guide. I'm going to highlight some of the items that are featured in it to give you a peek, a sneak peek into it. And you don't want to miss it because there are some really, really fabulous things. And it'll help you, you know, get a better understanding of, of, of what, uh, what we've got here. Um, oh, Diana says cornstarch, not talc. Yeah, cornstarch, I guess would probably do the same thing, right? It's that absorbent. I haven't tried any of those. I just, I like mine to spray on. I can control it better. I would make such a mess. I can't, that that's beyond my fine motor skills. So, um, but it's a great tip. And in the zombie apocalypse, if that ever happens, I will be pulling that out because my my dry shampoo supply will will run run dry. But um, I can't. <laughs> I would make such a mess. Lynn says I use cornstarch as dry shampoo. No scent. No alcohol to dry my hair. Well, you all have to share your application tips because like I said, it would just be powdering my whole bathroom. I would make make a mess. Nancy says, maybe cornstarch. I don't like baby powder smell either. Some people love it. But here's the thing. I, I hate the smell of baby powder. I love the smell of baby spit up because all six of my babies were reflux babies and that's what they smelled like. And that's what my shoulder smelled like. And my spit up cloth, like my babies always smelled like that. So that's not a nice smell, but I love that smell because that's, that was what my babies smelled like spit up. <laughs> I smelled like spit up. So that's a very nostalgic smell for me. See, I'm weird. Lynn says, I just had to share looking at the Talbot's catalog last night, thinking of fashion and function while I work from home this winter. I was turning the pages and saying, oh, I love this. Probably the color called to me. And then I would pause and say, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm learning 
in the perfectly put together program. And I, so I laughed and said, I do not like rounded collars. Turn the page. I did find a couple of things and that was fun, but shopping is quite different now. Thanks for the education. I love that. I love that. That's exactly what we want to happen. You can admire something and then remember, I'm admiring that. It, I see how attractive it is, but I also know I would not love that on myself. That makes me really happy, Lynn. I'm glad you shared that. Cody says, Batiste dry shampoo in the green, hand, green can does not smell at all and doesn't make your hair feel gross, gross. So that's one of my favorite ones. And the one that I got, just so you know, it's a new Batiste one. It's in a pink can and it's like volumizing. That's the one that did this. And I overapplied, right? <clears throat> it's clearly not meant to douse your head in. So if you try, I'm going to try it again, obviously, but just spritz, not, not the spray. So just so you know. <laughs> Karen says, there are aerosol dry shampoos that do not leave a white residue. Well, Karen, which ones are your favorite? I do like the Batiste one. Um, one of my favorites is the Living Proof one. That one's really expensive, though. Um, I don't always buy it. I go between that one and the Batiste one because Batiste is like $7 and, and the Living Proof one's like $24. So, you know, we go back and forth. But um, I like the Batiste one a lot. Lynn says, April does an amazing job finding unique classic clothes. The Facebook group is encouraging and a wonderful learning experience. Don't hesitate. Join today. You'll be so glad you did. Thank you, Lynn. I really appreciate that. I work really hard at it, <laughs> at finding those unique classic clothes, but also all your basics. I've got your basics covered first and foremost, um, so that you have a wearable wardrobe. We've got some of both. Nancy says, association to the smell of your babies. Very sweet. My friend likes the smell of plastic dolls. No, dolls scare me. Mm. We all like the smells of different things, right? I, yeah, that one's not me. And other people gag over that reflux smell, but it's, it's, it's babies. It's my babies. That's what they smell like. All right, ladies, thank you so much for joining me. This is always so much fun. And this part where we get to chat is my favorite part. So join me again on Monday and I'll show you a few of my favorite things from the wardrobe guide. And I will tell you the cheese on the pants story. Just if I forget, just remind me so that I will. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I would love to have you join me in the society. You can go to stunningstyle.com forward slash society to learn more and you will not regret it. We have so much fun in there. Karen says, try Milkshake brand lifestyling dry shampoo. I've never heard of that one, but I will look it up. I'm always trying a new dry shampoo. Diana says, thank you, April. You're welcome. Nancy says, thank you so much. Cheese forever. Have a great weekend. Oh, I still love me some cheese. Don't worry. I just, I'm always looking forward and make sure it's not on my pants. <laughs> okay. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. And I will see you Monday. And I hope I'll see you in the society today.